Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Eighth grade, unit five, lesson 12. How much will fit? Problem number one. A. Sketch a cube and label its side length as four centimeters. This will be cube A. It's a cube. It's going to have a top, a bottom, a front, a back, a right side, and a left side. And the side lengths will all be four centimeters. And label it cube A. B. Sketch a cube with sides that are twice as long as cube A. And label its side length. This will be cube B. The side lengths for this cube need to be twice as long as the side lengths for cube A. Since cube A has side lengths that are 4 centimeters long, this cube needs side lengths that are 8 centimeters long. Label the side lengths 8 centimeters and label the cube cube B. C. Find the volumes of cube A and cube B. To find the volume, we have to multiply three side lengths. The volume equals length times width times height. So for the smaller cube, the volume would be 4 times 4 times 4. The volume for the smaller cube is 64 centimeters cubed, or 64 cubic centimeters. And we'll do the same thing for cube B, the larger cube. The length times the width times the height. 8 times 8 times 8. The volume for the larger cube is 512 cubic centimeters, or 512 centimeters cubed. Problem number two. Several glass aquariums of various sizes are for sale at a pet shop. They are all shaped like rectangular prisms. A 15 gallon tank is 24 inches long, 12 inches wide, and 12 inches tall. Match the dimensions of the other tanks with the volume of water they can each hold. I could just find the volume of each of these tanks and then see how many times larger or how many times smaller they are compared to the volume of the aquarium and the word problem. But I've decided to look up to see how many cubic inches are in one U.S. liquid gallon. And there's 231 cubic inches in a U.S. gallon. What I'll do is I'll find the volume for each of these aquariums and then I'll see how many times 231 goes into the volume. Here's the first one. 36 times 18 times 12. That's a volume of 7,776 cubic inches. So I'm going to see how many times 231 goes into that. 7,776 divided by 231. That's about 33 gallons if it were filled to the very top. So I would select aquarium number four, 30 gallons. B, tank number two, 16 inches long, eight inches wide, and 10 inches tall. That's 16 times eight times 10. The volume for this tank is 1,280 inches cubed. 1,280 divided by 231 is a little over five and a half gallons. So I would select number one, the five gallons. C, tank three, 30 inches long, 12 inches wide, and 12 inches tall. That would be 30 times 12 times 12. That's 4,320 inches cubed. 4,320 divided by 231 is a little bit more than 18.7. So I would select three, 20 gallons. D, tank four, 20 inches long, 10 inches wide, and 12 inches tall. That's 20 times 10 times 12, which equals 2,400 inches cubed. 2,400 divided by 231 equals almost 10.4 gallons. For tank four, I would go with number two, 10 gallons. Problem number three, two paper drink cups are shaped like cones. The small cone can hold six ounces of water. 
the large cone is four-thirds the height and four-thirds the diameter of the small cone. Which of these could be the amount of water the large cone holds? We know that the small cone can hold six ounces of water. Both the height and the diameter of the large cone is four-thirds, or one and one-third, the height and diameter of the small cone. Here's a look at the small cone and the large cone. The diameter for both of these cones is unknown. We don't know the diameter, but we do know that the diameter of the larger cone is four-thirds or one and one-third that of the smaller cone. We also know that the height of the larger cone is also four-thirds or one and one-third larger than the height of the smaller cone. Looking back at the question, it asks which of these could be the amount of water the large cone holds. Since the large cone is larger than the smaller cone and the smaller cone holds six ounces of water, there's only one choice here that could be true and that would be 14 ounces. It couldn't be choices A or D because those are measured in centimeters. Centimeters is one dimensional like a length. It couldn't be choice C either because 4.5 ounces is less than 6 ounces. The larger cone would hold more than 6 ounces. So the only possible choice would be B, 14 ounces. Problem number 4 from 8th grade Unit 5 Lesson 7. The graph represents the volume of a cylinder with a height equal to its radius. A. When the diameter is 2, what is the radius of the cylinder? Radius is half the length of the diameter, so if the diameter is 2, the radius is 1. B. Express the volume of a cube of side length s as an equation. Since the volume equals length times width times height, we can write the equation volume equals s times s times s. Essentially, the volume equals s cubed, or s to the power of 3. C. Make a table for volume of the cube at s equals 0, s equals 1, s equals 2, and s equals 3. s equals 0 means side length equals 0. So with side length 0, the equation would be 0 times 0 times 0 with a volume of 0. With side length 1, the equation would read 1 times 1 times 1 and the volume is 1. With side length 2, the equation would read 2 times 2 times 2, and the volume would be 8. With side length 3, the equation would read 3 times 3 times 3, and the volume is 27. D. Which volume is greater, the volume of a cube when s equals 3, or the volume of a cylinder when its diameter is 3. The volume of a cube when the side length is 3 is 27, or 3 times 3 times 3. Take a look at the horizontal axis of the graph. That's the diameter. When the diameter of the cylinder is 3, the volume of the cylinder is between 10 and 11. When the diameter of a cylinder is 3, the volume is 10.6. Since 27 is greater than 10.6, the volume of the cube is greater. Problem number 5 from 8th grade Unit 3 Lesson 10. Select all the points that are on a line with slope 2 that also contains the point 2 and negative 1. Let's use the difference of the y values divided by the difference of the x values or y minus y over x minus x. The y value in the original set of points is negative 1 and the y value for a is 1. So negative 1 minus 1 over the x value 2 minus the x value 3. Negative 1 minus negative 1 is negative 2 and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 2 divided by negative 1 equals 2. So this has a slope of 2. That means that both of these points would be on the same line and that line would have a slope of 2. B. X value 1, Y value 1. Let's use the same strategy. 
the y value of the original minus the y value of b. Negative 1 minus 1 over the x value of the original minus the x value of b. 2 minus 1. Negative 1 minus negative 1 equals negative 2 and 2 minus 1 equals 1. Negative 2 divided by 1 equals negative 2. And that is not a slope of 2. It's a slope of negative 2. C. 1 and negative 3. So we'll do it the same way we did before. The original y value, negative 1, minus the y value of c, which is negative 3. Negative 1 minus a negative 3. That's the same thing as negative 1 plus 3. And negative 1 plus 3 equals 2 over the x value for the original, which is 2, minus the x value for c, which is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Now we have 2 divided by 1 equals 2. That means that both of these points would be on the same line, and that line would have a slope of 2. D, 4 and 0. We can set that up as negative 1 minus 0 over 2 minus 4. Negative 1 minus 0 equals negative 1, and 2 minus 4 equals negative 2. That's equivalent to 1 half which is not a slope of 2. That's a slope of 1 half. E, 6 and 7. Let's set it up the same way. Negative 1 minus 7 over 2 minus 6. Negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8, and 2 minus 6 is negative 4. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. This has a slope of 2. That means that both of these points would be on the same line, and that line would have a slope of 2. Problem number 6 from 8th grade unit 4 lesson 14. Solve. We can rewrite this as a system of equations where x plus 4 equals negative 2x minus 20. Add 2x to both sides of the equal sign. That leaves us with 1x plus 2x on the left for a total of 3x. And on the right side of the equal sign, the x's are canceled out. Now the equation reads 3x plus 4 equals negative 20. Let's subtract 4 from both sides of the equal sign. 4 minus 4 cancels each other out. And negative 20 minus 4 equals negative 24. Now the equation reads 3x equals negative 24. Let's divide both sides of the equal sign by 3. 3x divided by 3 equals 1x, or x, and negative 24 divided by 3 equals negative 8. 1x, or x, equals negative 8. Now that we know the value for x is negative 8, we can substitute the x with a negative 8. So the equation y equals x plus 4 can be rewritten as y equals negative 8 plus 4. Since negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4, we know that y equals negative 4. Now we know the values for both x and y. x equals negative 8 and y equals negative 4. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.